Hello everyone, this is uh, another episode of your daily dose of Terraform and today I'd like to make a little bit uh, different thing than usual. I want to make an interview with uh, Kazuma Watanabe who has GitHub uh, Vata 727 on GitHub. He is the creator of the TFLint project which uh, I have reviewed a few episodes ago. So uh, I will be asking questions and uh, I will uh, uh, make an audio of uh, Kazuma's answers. So as you may imagine, the supporter of this episode is AWS and specifically Amazon Poly. Let's get started. So Kazuma uh, is an author of uh, TFLean project and uh, he has been uh, doing it for quite a long time. So uh, this is his profile. Uh, please uh, take a look and uh, yeah, let's start. So, hi Kazuma, uh, tell me about yourself. What do you do? How is the weather in Japan? Hi Anton. The weather in Japan is rainy. I'm a back-end engineer who usually uses Ruby and Ruby on Rails mainly. You started the TFLint project in 2016 when Terraform 0.8 was just released. Tell, uh, tell me, uh, what was your motivation for this project back then? Did you start it for fun or for employer or client? At that time, I was working at a small Japanese startup company converting existing infrastructure into Terraform configurations. During this work, I failed to Terraform apply many times and was very stressed and the cause of the error was a very trivial one such as typo. I found this is a big challenge. Infrastructure as code is losing the minimum validation that Managed Console previously provided. I thought it was necessary to fill such a gap in order for infrastructure as code to develop in the future. That is the beginning of the project. So now, six years after, how has the project changed? Community growth, features, or mass adoption? Thankfully, TFLint has become famous for many users. The number of contributors has also increased, and more than 50 developers have contributed to the project. I think the big change is my stance on this tool. At first, I wasn't going to implement rules about styling, like naming conventions. I've contributed to Ruby Linter called RuboCop, but this tool has often caused personal preference-based style discussions and has been a source of many conflicts. I didn't want to make a similar conflict in TFLint, and I wanted everyone to benefit from using TFLint. But in fact, there was always a demand for style rules. At first, I considered making a new tool for treating the style rules, but I thought it was not user-friendly to use two tools properly. Currently, to address this problem, I'm aiming to make TFLint a pluggable linter. Imagine such as the ESLint. The default provides rules about possible errors, and it allows you to customize the rules as needed for detecting style issues. Until the migration is complete, I'm accepting those rules as disabled by default. Can you share some statistics about TFLint usage, maybe from GitHub statistics? How many people use TFLint? How many issues or pull requests they open daily or monthly? It seems that the GitHub repository is accessed at about 600 page views and 150 unique users a day. I'm not sure how many users there are, but I look at the homebrew, it seems that about 4,000 installs in a month. There aren't that many pull requests and issues, and I think it's only a few per month. The number of issues open so far is about 300, and the number of pull requests including Dependabot is about 700. Can you tell me about the features TFLint has already? In particular, I know TFLint has support for language server protocol, which actually works. I, are, there, are there useful features you want to share with us? Some of the disabled rules may be of interest. For example, the Terraform underscore unused underscore declarations rule added in v0.16.0 helps to refactor a big Terraform configuration. It is a good idea to take a look at the rule list once. LSP is a very special case. Ideally, many issues can be found in real time in the editor, but all are still VIP. If you are interested, please give it a try and give us your feedback. 
And talking about features, how dependent TF Lint development lifecycle to Terraform's one? If I remember correctly, TF Lint didn't have support for Terraform 012 right after Terraform 012 was released, and it drove some customers away from using it. If I remember, uh, what was the problem, or sorry, <laughs> if you remember, what was the problem with updating TFLint when Terraform 012 was released? It depends on that very much. So far, I've done a few big refactorings on TFLint v0.8.0 with Terraform 0.12 support is one of them. Prior to v0.8.0, TFLint used the HCL package directly. This does not correctly emulate Terraform semantics, for example, Terraform merges the underscore override.tf file with the configuration file of the same name, but tflint did not support it. Due to this issue, releases prior to v0.8.0 contained many bugs. I consulted with the Terraform team to address the major changes in Terraform 0.12 while addressing this issue. After that, I adopted the policy of using Terraform as a library and using the internal API directly. Pull request 209 rewrote most of the code at the time. Now we have a feeling of the next big change. The Terraform team has decided to internalize all packages in v0.15, Terraform issue 26418. With this change, tflint loses the means to emulate Terraform semantics. We are discussing the response to the decision, flint issue 937, but we haven't found the answer yet. And what is currently on your to-do list for this project? What is TFLint plugin SDK? Can you tell a bit about it? It's been four years since the project started, but I still feel that the problem I wanted to solve hasn't been solved enough. I want to focus on the major clouds, AWS, Azure, GCP, first so that we can detect more provider-specific issues. The plugin SDK is the first step towards making TFLint a pluggable linter. By using this, you can easily create custom rules like creating a custom provider for Terraform. I hope that by evolving the plugin ecosystem, we will be able to expand our support for other providers and allow people who are familiar with providers to focus on some plugins. If you're interested in creating custom rules, take a look at the template rule set, Flint rule set template repository. I believe you can imagine a use case from some examples, but if you find something confusing, please open an issue and let me know. I know that everything we do is happening with help from the community. So, who is Ben? He is a developer who has contributed to some rule development. His knowledge of Terraform and Go language is very reliable. In fact, I'm very grateful to him for his help in many situations, including triage issues and bug fixes. I want as many people as possible to be involved in this project, and I invite as many contributors as possible to the organization. Do you remember what was the strangest and surprising bug you discovered? Can you tell a bit about it? The old code base used a lot of reflection and was full of really terrible bugs. I thought this was a particularly terrible bugs. 78, 114, 158. And uh, what do you want your or our uh, listeners to know about TFLint? or any of your other projects? I want you to know about the problems that TF Lint wants to solve. And I would like to hear your thoughts on it. Do you feel this is a big problem with Terraform? Why is that? What do you think TF Lint should do for that? And finally, how can people help you? Share some details if you want people to know. The community is always open. If you have any suggestions, please open an issue or contact me. My email address is published on GitHub, and you can send us a reply on Twitter. Thank you very much. Bye.